Although there was never any doubt that Star Wars Episode VII would be an enormous box office success, moviegoers and Star Wars fans, otherwise known as Starries, were unsure if it would be able to take the series to the next level, or if it would be the final nail after the lukewarm prequel trilogy failed to capture the same lightning as the original series. Fast forward, as expected, Star Wars The Force Awakens was a massive box office success, grossing over $2 billion worldwide and becoming the highest grossing film domestically, without adjusting for inflation. The film received very positive reviews from critics, and although I'd ventured in saying that most fans were positive about the film, a very vocal minority had a very lukewarm response to the film. Star Wars The Force Awakens hap happens 30 years after Return of the Jedi, and focuses on Rey, Finn, and Poe Dameron's search for Luke Skywalker, and also the battles with the Resistance against Kylo Ren and the First Order. <laughs> Is, is I wonder if we could get copyrights and actually make shirts that say I'm a starry. Starry should be a thing. It's in fact I, I feel like that's how we're gonna make our millions. <laughs> is if if we uh, do shirts, coffee mugs, uh, hats, maybe you know whatever else we could get, and we are going to make millions upon millions on this. So what we're going to talk about now is The Force Awakens, and that's the seventh, 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 that's the seventh episode. Seventh episode of uh, the Star Wars. I guess now it's not a saga. What is seven? A lot. A lot. That's what <laughs> of seven. Of the Star Wars A Lot series. Of A Lot series. Okay, so the thoughts going into the blockbuster film uh, that is titled The Force Awakens, um, what were your general thoughts on it? I know that... A lot of people were super hyped up that it was going to be a new Star Wars movie, but also a little apathetic thinking, no, oh, no, are they going to ruin the Star Wars? Although, I don't know how much further you could actually ruin it. Yeah, because a lot of people had a lot of criticisms about the prequel trilogy. I, like, I don't have much enthusiasm about Star Wars. Like, whenever I was a kid, I was a really big fan of Star Wars. Uh, I think that... Uh, you and my other brother, Michael, were both really big fans of Star Wars, and I myself enjoyed it as well. I was a fan of the video games, I was a fan of the original Battlefront games, and I was a fan of this game that is horrible that hardly anyone knows about anymore. It was like the Masters of the Jedi or something like that. It was on the PlayStation 1, and it was a Mortal Kombat type fighting game. And you were... Like, there was this one woman who practiced fighting mechanics, or, like, not fighting. She didn't fight with weapons. It was, like, a hand-to-hand -hand thing. But anyways, that was a fighting game that everyone hated. I was a huge fan of when I was younger. And, like, so I don't have much enthusiasm now looking back, but I hold it with some nostalgia. But every time I go back to look at it, I don't, I don't get into it as much as some people do. So whenever I found out that Disney acquired the rights to make a new Star Wars film, I was just pretty... Uh, not necessarily apathetic, but I was I was looking to give it a chance, and I was not either really excited or disappointed one way or the other. And I know that you are a big fan of Star Wars, so it made me feel magical in a lot of different areas. <laughs> if you know, if you know what I mean, especially whenever it first was announced, it wasn't announced yet that Lucasfilms had been sold off to Disney. That wasn't a thing. So whenever Mark Hamill and all of them were recasted as their uh, roles to uh, reprise them, they didn't even know that Disney would be interjecting themselves. And I am not one of these people that are going to sit back and be like, Disney ruins everything, because I don't think that they do. And so <coughs> I was really, really excited whenever I found out that it was going to occur. Whenever I found out the title of it was The Force Awakens, I, I really was still excited about it. I mean, we heard rumors about what could happen. I made up my own little things in my head that I thought could happen, that I thought would be amazing. It doesn't really ever go in that route that I thought it would. <laughs> like, I don't remember if you can recall us discussing of it, but I thought that, you know, we would have Luke with, like, two children, and they would be Kylo and, and Rey, and that one of them definitely would have went to the dark side, one of them to the light side, and we would have had that whole entire difference. 
Uh, it turns out that my predictions were totally off keel and they were nothing like that. But that was my general thoughts going into The Force Awakens. And it didn't bother you that Disney was <laughs> was the one to do it. Like that's I know, and I know you said that um, you're not one that hates Disney, and I'm I'm not one that hates Disney either. Like my criticism about Disney isn't that it ruins everything; it's simply that it owns everything, and it's kind of, it borders along uh, a monopoly. But at the same time, though, it's it stands the reason I'm a pretty big fan of their films. Like you and I both like the Marvel movies. We both like Pirates of the Car- uh, Caribbean, although the last few have been not so great. A little shaky. Yeah, a little shaky. Um, but overall, we consider ourselves Disney fans, on some level, at least. I figure Disney is the epitome of, like, it's like Walmart. Let's just say it's Walmart. Everybody hates Walmart, but everybody goes to Walmart. You never go into Walmart and be like, there is no one in here. Everybody must be at another <laughs> store. It's like everybody hates Walmart, but everyone doesn't hate everything in Walmart. Right. We want the items. Right. So. I, I want to buy things that are in Walmart. I don't want to give my money necessarily to Sam Walton's family, but I also want to buy toilet paper that's cheap. <laughs> so I, I want to go in there and have toilet paper that feels good and it's cheap, and I don't want to have to go to 50 places to do it. So that's the way I figure. Star Wars is now owned by Disney. I can also watch Marvel movies that are owned by Disney. I can also watch Lion King that's owned by Disney. That I don't, I don't. But we're digressing off off of this into a Disney discussion, which maybe we could do at a later date and time. So, a whole new cast of characters are sprinkled into Episode Seven: The Force Awakens. Um, it also has the familiar cast of Luke, Leia, um, sprinkled in with so that way we have some aforementioned history. Yeah, and so. What do you think? How did uh, Star Wars do in terms of building new characters to immerse yourself into? Um, I I don't find that I ever had any moment where I thought to myself that these characters were great, or I had any character where I'm like, I love you, or... I don't feel like... And I, d- I don't guess I didn't really feel that way as much when I watched the original movies. I never felt that close bond whenever I first watched it to Han Solo. Like, I, I thought to myself, like, he's, it's Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford seems like a pretty cool guy. Uh, Mark Hamill. I'm a huge fan of Mark Hamill. I think he does fantastic as the voice of the Joker. But, like, he's a whiny brat in A New Hope. And that's so, I, I don't think I ever had that much of a bond. Whereas these characters, I think to myself, these guys are pretty likable. Uh, like, Daisy Ridley in the performance of Rey. I think she's really likable. And, like, I, as I watch it, I think to myself, like, she could. I can see her blossoming into a better character as it progresses, and in a similar way to how Luke pro- I mean, became a better character as the original trilogy progressed. Um, I think that my favorite character, and it sucks because I'm suddenly not able to remember his name. It's. Uh, it isn't Finn. It isn't. Uh, it's. Oh. And I, yeah, it's Poe. It, and it and it's not as much in the first in episode seven as I start to like him even more in episode eight. I like him because he's a smart aleck. And, like, he's he's got some... He's Han Solo. Yeah, essentially, yeah. He's Han Solo. And, uh... He's, he's got... He's one of the few characters... Everyone else feels so serious all the time. Not always extremely... Not extremely serious, but they don't have that added color. And I feel like he has a lot more personality. So, what I'm thinking is, is that one of the major faults with Seven, not from my perspective, but from the perspective of those who did not like the movie, was that there was not enough build to the characters or you didn't get the connection to the characters. But I I always think back, like, a lot of the complaints that I hear about the new movies and some of the complaints that I find myself saying... I realize that the old movies did the exact same thing. It's like we have, like, a subconscious bias. (laughs) Right, because I'm sitting here thinking, like, well, there was... I, I don't, I mean, I hear it, I read it, and I start to think, well, there was no character development in that. But then I remember Star Wars Episode uh, 4, and there was no character development in that either. Like, you met Luke, already grown, and then his family dies, and then he just moves on, and he finds Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan takes him to, like, he barely gets trained, nothing really happens. Like, a lot of it was, oh, wow, Ray could just start using the Force. Luke just started using the Force. Like, there was no training. The only one that had training was Anakin. And you never really got to see much of Anakin's training because it jumped so much. So you had a little bit of Luke training with Obi-Wan. Like, 
what is maybe a consideration is to like there was a couple conversations with him and he was like this is a lightsaber and that like that's it and then uh, Yoda made him carry him on his back like seriously I don't know what that taught him about the force but Yoda didn't want to walk across the across the swamp so like those two were some of the main uh, hits on the movie and I don't think that they were necessarily fair fair because of the fact that the episodes that we watched previously that we love and adore did the same thing didn't didn't really train and so you know going on and I think you've already answered this question with with Poe but one of the questions that I was thinking of was who is your favorite character so my favorite character is not Finn it's not Poe it's not Ray it's not Kylo Ren is it still Han it's not it's not <laughs> Snoke no I mean my favorite character definitely is Han but I mean like introduced character oh, okay. is, is is definitely oddly enough is BB-8 I just I love the idea of BB-8. I don't know why I like BB-8. That was probably my favorite uh, character in it. Um, so that that is is really odd, and he doesn't really have a. Major it's hard. Part in the it's movie, like but... uh, they do this a lot, especially in uh, not just in Disney movies, in big blockbusters in general. Where I see like you, you love BB-8. You love him, but you think to yourself, or at least I do, whenever I see him, like, ah, oh, you're made to sell toys. Uh, oh, yeah, he's definitely made Definitely, and, like, they have those one animals in episode eight. Are they porgs? Porgs. I'm like, ah, oh, you're made to sell toys. And, like, I see Groot. I almost Groot. bought one of those the <laughs> other day. Like, I was like, I know you're $80, but you're so cute. And then, like, I see, like, baby Groot, and I'm like, ah, like, oh, you're made to sell toys. And I'm like, and the thing is, I'm like, I saw, like, the, whenever I, uh, and at the store, I see the uh, Bop It uh, group, and I'm like, I want you. And then I see like the larger one, I'm like, I want you. <laughs> I want to buy everything in this store. <laughs> so, continuing on, and since we were talking about Han Solo being my favorite character, um, what do you think about his death? Is it possibly the saddest moment in Star Wars? I don't know. I felt nothing at all. So, <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I, uh, I will admit that I knew it was going to happen beforehand because, like, spoilers are so difficult to keep out of Star Wars. And the thing is, uh, it wasn't even, like, looking up something Star Wars related. People are just terribly mean on the internet. And they'll do things like, I'll go and watch a uh, Cyanide and Happiness cartoon. I'll go and watch that. And then I'll go to the YouTube comments and they're like, hey, that was really funny, just like whenever Han Solo was killed by Kylo Ren, who, by the way, is Ben Solo. And then I'm like, oh, I didn't expect that. And it just like, then like a bunch of down comments. <laughs> yeah, well, downvotes. yeah, people on the internet, you should probably just stay uh, away from it. Yeah, uh, it, was, it wasn't a bad scene. And like, I feel like even if I wouldn't have read or had that spoiler, I would have anticipated it on some level. It's, like, it's admirable for Star Wars in general, and I realize that it's, uh, it's because they're older cast and they're starting to do away with them because they're no longer going to be able to carry themselves on into the next phase of the Star Wars series, but it's always nice to see, like, plot armor removed from a character and being able to, like, w have a willingness to kill them off in a memorable way. He's definitely the biggest character to be killed off in... I think he's the most popular character, or... Of the original series, but I don't think he was the most important character after after the fact. Like, I think Luke is definitely the most important character after the fact, or the most popular character after the fact. But Luke never really dies. And yeah. we'll get into that on... on yeah, we'll talk, about, uh, we'll talk about episode 8. But, but Han, at this point, is probably the most shocking death. I mean, we all expected Vader to, to kick the bucket. I mean, once he decided to sacrifice himself, I, I don't think that there was any... Oh, wow, Vader's dead. But we also thought maybe that that was the end of the you know the saga. That was the end of the series, and we're like, okay, he died. That was an okay go out for Vader. But I think that Han is in the middle of the new trilogy, of the first middle of the first movie, and he's dead. You're like, oh wow, that really has it has like you said, it took off all the plot armor, so you weren't necessarily ready for it. You might have. It might have foreshadowed it a little bit, but honestly, I probably would not have been one to say, yeah, Han Solo is probably going to die if I hadn't been told that going into the movie. And honestly, I hadn't been told that going into the movie. I was able to avoid any and all spoilers, but if if I had been told it 
you know, I, I would have been like, okay, yeah, I could probably see that, and you could see it leading up to it. And honestly, once they got to the bridge, I kind of felt that it was mm-hmm. it was Han's time, like it was going to be the end. But I, I still wasn't necessarily, you know, ready for it. But I do felt or feel that his character was probably done. Like, he didn't really have much else to do. He didn't really need to be there for any of the rest of the films. It was a write-in. They actually changed it uh, midway into the movie. I'm like, well, if you're going to break your leg every time we film these things, we're just going <laughs> to write you out. So one of the weird things about episode seven was that we had a lot of questions on it, and we're, we'll answer those questions hopefully with uh, episode eight. Um, but, you know, one of the major questions was who was Ray's parents? We asked that question far before the movie started, and we'll talk about this more in episode eight because I think that in that aspect of it telling us who they are, I think that we'll probably revisit this question in eight to go mm-hmm. more into depth. I just want to say that... What was the weirdest point of trying to figure out who her parents were to you? I, like, what do you mean by weirdest point? I mean, like, what was some of the the theories that you heard or some of the... Some of the... Or even some of the actions inside the movie. Because I'll (laughs) tell you what I mean, is that whenever Han was so, so connected to her, like, he was offering her a job on the Falcon, and you were kind of like, huh. Yeah, there's, um... One of the theories that I heard thrown around a lot was the fact that it was going to be Han Solo's kid. And the reason that I heard this is I heard a couple of different reasons and a couple of reasons why people thought this. First and foremost is in the script, there was at the very last paragraph, or no, it was whenever they were um, landing, people pointed out like, how come uh, Princess Leia hugged uh, hugged, uh, Rey right as they met? They hugged her, and then there's Chewbacca right over there and by himself, who just lost his best friend. See, that was one of the weird points of the movie. And though. But someone pointed out, like, they looked at the script, and in the last paragraph, it says to it, uh, uh, Leia holds Rey in a mother, uh, motherly embrace. And, like, that's the point that people, like, motherly embrace. And a lot of people pointed that out, like, maybe that's why. And also a lot of people did, there was, like, a live reading, or a... I don't know exactly what it was. It was like a reading of the Star Wars script for Episode Seven, and they for these things they have people seated around the area, and like they they seat people down to who they have the strongest emotional connection with. Uh, so we had Ray, and to her left was Princess Leia or uh, Carrie Fisher, and to her right was Han Solo, you know, uh, Harrison Ford, and she was smack dab uh, smack dab in between them. And that was a pretty curious thing, that she was seated in uh, in between them. Because, like, uh, Princess Leia didn't have that huge of a part in the first in in Episode 7. So it was uh, unique, and a lot of people were drawn to that as well. One other comparison, or one other theory that I heard that I really liked, and it was the one that I wanted, was I heard Obi-Wan Kenobi. And a lot of people were pointing out just some of the things that she did. Like, uh, like whenever she was fighting with Kylo Ren in the... uh, the uh, in like that forest with the snow and all that, like whenever she was she stopped and she would close her eyes and contemplate, and they were pointing out that Obi Wan Kenobi did that a lot, and there was there was also there's a quote that George Lucas says when he's describing the Star Wars series, he says that he approaches Star Wars like poetry, it rhymes, and uh, so people were thinking like it has to have a connection, it has to have a connection, it rhymes. And so everyone immediately thought to themselves that it was going to be, Ray was going to be Luke Skywalker's kid. And that's what everyone drew to. But wouldn't it be great if it was, uh, if it was instead of a uh, Kenobi training a Skywalker, it was a Skywalker training a Kenobi. And it would, I think that would have been really cool. And like Mark Hamill had a lot of fun with uh, acting like uh, Ray was his daughter. Like, he would do, like, live readings and uh, jokes about it, and he'd be like, yeah, I was really excited to work with my daughter, uh, my best, my good friend, um, uh, Daisy, over here. And he'd do things like that just to poke fun at it. So, like I said, those were weird. Were they plot holes? I don't know. And that's I think what... they might have been intentional red herrings, especially the thing with the script. But it, was, it, but it also made it weird. Like, why would Leia just hold? Hugger. Why? Why was know. Han being like in two seconds? He's like, hey, "You got a job on my ship," and it's it's like, 
Now, if you're not a father, now it becomes weird and creepy, hon. Like, what are you doing, buddy? But, so, like, I heard a bunch of theories as well. Luke, Obi-Wan, where they, she was uh, Han and Leia's kid. Which, after after watching Seven, I was like, that would be really stupid if she was Han and Leia's kid. Because they, they never were... mentioned it. That would yeah. be really dumb. But I also heard, like, uh, Qui-Gon, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, who was the uh, victim of the Phantom Menace, uh, the the uh, Darth Maul character. He was the victim of him while Obi-Wan was hanging down out in the tunnel hole. For uh, a few hours. For a few hours, and uh, Darth Maul decided he would pace and, and taunt, and, taunt <laughs> and watch and forget that Obi-Wan could use the Force. But I, I heard a bunch, and then I also heard, you know, what actually happened, which we'll say again in eight, as to avoid spoilers in yeah. episode seven's discussion. But to to say that the weirdness of it is what that was. And so we never really got the answer to it in seven, but we got a lot of weird moments out of it in seven. And that was one of the things that really... I guess you can kind of, if you want to... Um, do it. There is a lot of times where whenever someone dies, or like whenever someone is facing some kind of trouble, they they can feel it. Like uh, like Princess Leia can feel it when certain things happen. So maybe she felt a immediate connection to Rey, and that's why they embraced. We'll, we'll just let it go on that. So so if we if we stop dissecting that part and start dissecting a different kind of question, what we have heard mostly as the main criticism, and you have spoken on it, is that episode seven is <laughs> a repackaged episode four. Do you think that they're too close to akin to each other? I think that, uh, and you said it yourself whenever we first discussed it, whenever we first saw the movie way back ago, where it's it's deliberate. It's supposed to be. It's not like it's not trying to like trick us or like by giving us the same thing. It is specifically trying to do that, but that doesn't change the fact that it does it. It's very, very much similar. Uh, like with uh, BB-8 carrying a secret or important information, uh, just like how, um, what's his name was? Too. Yeah. And uh, so there's, and then of course, Darth Vader and Kylo Ren's characters are very, very, or Kylo Ren is very much inspired by his... But I think that goes into it. So what you're saying is is that like it is repeating a lot. And I, what I think is really amazing about repeating is if you take a step back and you realize that... History repeats history, itself? Yeah, history repeats itself. And <laughs> if someone was enamored with somebody as much as Kylo Ren is with Vader, then you would expect to see similarities. And Snoke even... what is, He stokes that fire. He says you know stuff like, You are Vader's uh, grandchild. You are, you know, this about Vader, this about Vader, and like kind of stokes that. So that like other people do as well. Like whenever Poe says, "You are not, you're not Darth Vader. You're, you'll never be him." Right. So I, to see that history with Snoke rebuilding and the 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 Death Star, which they call the Star Killer, yeah. and it's it's different while it's the same, but you got to think of it as Snoke is really playing to Kylo Ren's. Uh, insignificance and he's also playing to his like passion to be the same as Vader like he wants to be Vader and you could see this and I think it plays into Kylo Ren's character that they're doing some of the things like yeah but it's and like I said I understand that it's a deliberate thing and there's a certain intrigue with how they do it but at the same time like there's like I said there's the carrying the secret message there's uh, Kylo Ren and Darth Vader's parallels there is the Star Killer being essentially the uh, Death Star. There is the weakness that they both have, which is a little different, but still pretty much the same basic idea. The way that that is thwarted, the same way as, or in a very very similar way as how it's done in Episode Four, and it just it's although you can tell it's doing it deliberately, that doesn't change the fact that it isn't doing anything new, and it's. It, it, it makes it feel like, even if you do have your, even if the cogs are turning in a particular direction, like, I wish they could have found a way to do it in a more original way. So, overall, though, I don't, and you do, think that possibly it could be too close. It's, like, I would have liked them to do, uh, 
more. Like, I, I don't, I don't agree with the sentiment that it's a complete ripoff and it just like, or anything like that. But it's almost, it almost feels like a subtle reboot of the series. Like a very, very, uh, it's a reboot without being a direct reboot of the Star Wars franchise. And that's what I feel like. Okay. Like it carries on, but at the same time, uh, begins the story again. So I think we've hit on all the major points of The Force Awakens, which is, what, two years old now? So it's had a lot of time to sit in everybody's mind. It's now part of the Star Wars canon. It leads, I think, well into Episode Eight. Let's go a rapid fire with five questions real quick and just answer them as quickly as possible. We don't have to elaborate on them. Best of the Star Wars movies? No. Yes. Say- For me, probably. Really close with episode uh, f- uh, episode 5, which is A New like, Hope. No. Really close. You're wrong. <laughs> it's episode 5 is Empire Strikes Back. Empire Strikes uh, Back. Why? Uh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So episode 5, really like, close. I, I need five. to watch Empire Strikes Back. But like, it's definitely, in my head, it's one or two. That's what I'd say. Um, so... Does it have the best villain? No. No. I uh, I agree very much. I don't really know. What do you think about Kylo Ren? Just like to... I will talk more about Kylo Ren when we talk about episode eight. So I don't want to give anything away here because I'm going to talk a lot extensively about Kylo Ren in our episode eight discussion, which you guys can continue to follow us to the episode eight. Um, You guys can also go back and watch our episode one where we talk about episode uh, the Rogue One. And you guys can comment, like this video, share, and also subscribe. And you guys can follow us to episode 8. But let's finish these last three questions. Better Apprentice, Vader, or Ren? Vader. Vader. As well, better main character, Rey, Luke, Anakin? Rey. Oh. I, well, the thing is, I know it's not Anakin, so it's either Rey or Luke. That's not fair. Anakin was the best main character. It's just that Anakin was portrayed horribly, horribly. so I'm going Luke. Uh, rate the movie out of 10. I know you hate these, but do it uh, anyways. I'm going to say a 7.5. I'm going to say that it was probably a 8.8. That concludes our discussion for The Force Awakens. Like I said, follow us over to the next video and we will discuss The Last Jedi which is now in theaters if you guys have not watched this movie I suggest that you do not yet click on episode 8 but go watch the movie and then come back and you guys can listen comment below and discuss with us thank you for watching